एवरी वन वेलकम टू माई यूट्यूब चैनल सो इन दिस पर्टिकुलर वीडियो वी विल टॉक अबाउट वॉट इज द रोड मैप टू अंडरस्टैंड रिकर्शन माई नेम इज प्रिया एंड आई हैव बीन टीचिंग द डी एस ए फ्रॉम पास्ट यू नो थ्री ईयर्स सो आई हैव क्रिएटेड अ सेपरेट प्ले लिस्ट ऑफ डी एस ए वेर यू कैन ट्राई एंड गो थ्रू अ लॉट ऑफ कॉन्सेप्ट एंड दैट टू विद एन अमेजिंग एक्सप्लेनेशन एंड डू चेक इट आउट फॉर श्योर बिकॉज दीज कॉन्सेप्ट विल रियली हेल्प यू टू गेट any product based company and uh, there is a separate playlist for the interview questions as well so please try to go through with that particular playlist as well before going to any of the interviews whenever you are switching to any product based company so let's get started with the today's concept here i am talking about the road map of recursion why is this topic i have chosen what's the idea behind that so if you will observe in dsa in data structure algorithms recursion plays a very important role starting from you know algorithmically concept of divide and conquer to the dynamic programming i believe this concept plays a very important role and what i have observed is that from you know teaching from past 3 years that the students who are very good in this recursion concept they really easily able to find out the solutions for any of the hard level problems as well but those who are really stuck in this concept they won't be able to get a solution for the problems which are asked in an interviews so please try to pay attention towards the concept of recursion the very first thing uh, those who are not aware about what recursion is all about recursion is simply calling the same function calling its own function again with different set of parameters is something which you you can say in layman words is called recursion for example if i'll try to give you one simple example here for example i'll tell you that okay can you give me a code for Fib fibonacci series so now when i'm talking about something called as fibonacci series uh i hope everyone knows what this fibonacci series all about right fibonacci series all about so here if you if you remember uh suppose i will be having an array okay and uh, let me just try to draw it out 0 1 2 3 4 5 and 6 okay so this is the fibonacci series if i'll write it so it will 0 it will be 1 it will be 1 it will be 2 it will be 3 it will be 5 it will be 8 so what i am doing here if you will observe it very much carefully i am saying that when the value of n is less than or equal to 1 at that point of time the result will be equal to the value of index itself when the value of n is less than equals to 1 the result is something which is equals to what is the value of the index number so if the index number is represented by i starting from 0 to 6 so at that point of time the value or the result or the array that i have created is something which is equals to array of i is equals to i itself but when the value of n is greater than 1 means when i'm talking about index index number 2 3 4 5 and 6 and so on so at that point of time if you will be able to see or here you can clearly write it like this as well that at that point of time your value of f of n which is an array is equals to n itself because here i am considering the value of n will start from 0 and will go until the value which i want as a upper index which is 6 so here my value of n will start from 0 and is moving under 6 as of now in current particular problem that we have when the value of n is greater than 1 at that point of time my value of f of n is something which is equals to the addition of the previous two numbers so it will be f of n minus 1 plus f of n minus 2 can i say for example here when the value of n is less than equal to 1 means when the value is 0 the value is equals to n itself value is 1 it is equals to n itself but when the value of n is 2 at that point of time what is the value of f of 0 and f of 1 addition of these two so what i am saying here i am saying that uh i'll start from 0 so this is the case number 1 right which we are dealing and this is the case number 2 that we are dealing here now in both of the cases if you will try to observe very much carefully initially when i am starting from zero the 
zero is less than equal to one. So it lies under case number one. What I what we are saying that this is f of zero, right? This is the array that we have. This is f of n, which I am writing. So initially, when it is zero, so the value of n is zero, so it will be zero itself. When the value of n is equals to one, it will be one itself because again it will lie under case number case number one. But when the value of n is equals to two, it will lie under case number two. So when I am saying I want to calculate what is the value of f of two, I'll say it will be equals to what is the value of f of one plus what is the value of f of zero. So what is the value of f of one? I have the value one plus zero. So the answer which is coming out to be one here, and that's why we have written the answer as one here. Similarly, if I will move ahead, f of three is equals to. Now you you can tell me. Just pause the video and try to answer it out. It is equals to f of one plus f of two. So it will be one plus one, which is equals to two. Now here, this is something to calculate. Suppose I will write the function f of n. Inside that function, I am writing mainly these two conditions. That if the value of n is less than equals to one, the answer will be equals to n. Otherwise, this is the function name. This is the function name which is f of n, and this is the function name which I am calling it again, right? To store the values, to store the values, right? So I hope I am making sense now. For example, if I will just try to represent it in a logical naming, Fibonacci of n is the function name that we are defining here. Is the function name that we are defining here. Now, what I am saying inside this particular thing in the case number two, we are calling the same function fib of n minus one plus fib of n minus two, right? So we are calling the same function again. This is the function name, and we are calling the same function again with a different set of parameters that we have, which is n minus one and n minus two. This is something that. We are calling as a concept of recursion, and with this with this particular concept, you will see that first thing is that we will always be having a lesser lines of code. We will always be having a lesser lines of code because of the concept of recursion. We will be able to write lesser lines of code, and we will be able to get a faster result. But on the same part. the question is that how we will be able to understand these concepts or what is the road map that we will follow to understand the recursion concept in this recursion concept always make sure that you should know that how the recursive tree is building for every recurs recursive problem make sure that how we can construct any recursive tree the complete recursive tree how we can create that for that you can follow my uh, youtube video where i have talked about maybe the explanation of merge sort maybe the explanation of you know quick sort basically if you will observe if you will observe for all the applications of for all the applications of applications of the concept of divide and conquer algorithm divide and conquer algorithm we are solving the questions with the help of a recursion concept and for every recursive problem you always the the key thing is that you should know that how we are creating a recursive tree for that after creating a recursive tree you should know that how we will be able to generate a recurrence relation for the same recurrence relation for the same very very important now in the recurrence relation for example here if you will observe if i i will ask you what is the recurrence relation of this above code the recurrence relation is suppose the time complexity to you know get this particular code is t of n so you can say that when the value of t of n is equals to so i can say that when the value of n is less than equals to 1 then it is constant because here we are returning the uh, direct value which is n but when the value of n is bigger than 1 at that point of time we are saying that it will be equals to t of n minus 1 plus t of n minus 2 
Why? Because we are calling here the recursion again. So wherever recursion is calling, you are repeating that tth term, right? So this is something which you know how you can solve that. And for that particular aspect, you should have an understanding of how we can solve any recurrence relation. And in order to solve any recurrence relation, you have three methods. First method is something which you, sh you should be aware of is the substitution method. Second method is something that you should be aware of is the recursive tree approach. Recursive tree approach. And the third method is something that you know is the master's theorem. Now, you can ask me that, okay, do we require all these methods to learn? See, uh, substitution and masters, any one of them will work. But for recursive tree, it is utilized only when you will be having more than one recursive term. So, it's good to have a knowledge of all these, uh, you know, methods so that at any point of time, whichever method you feel will be giving a faster result, you can utilize that. Okay. So, the second important key thing is the recurrence relation solving things, which we can do via three methods, substitution, recursive and master's theorem. Now, where you can find the more major problems of recursion. As I told you that whatever be the applications of divide and conquer that we have. So here, if you will, if you will ask me that which problems should I solve for the recursion? So where the recursive problems are there because recursion plays a very important role. And the more you practice these questions, more you practice that how you will create a recursive tree, more you practice how you can be able to compute any time complexity more command you will be able to get over DSA problems because maximum problems you will be having a recursive solution and you can easily able to you know give that solution uh, as a maybe sometimes brute force approach or sometimes a optimized approach to the interviewer and it's very easy to click that particular solution via recursion this is what I have observed as per my experience and that's what I am sharing with you all so in recursive problems the very first thing is the applications of divide and conquer so maximum applications you will observe that for divide and conquer algorithms you will be easily able to solve using a recursion method apart from that in dynamic programming again recursion plays a very important role in dynamic programming applications you will observe that first of all your very first thing is try to think that how am I able to solve this particular problem with respect to recursion? In dynamic programming, once you will be able to solve the problem using recursion, you might face a TLE issue, time limit exceeded. And at that point of time, uh, you know, optimized approach called memoization and tabulation came into picture. And you know, when I'm saying memoization approach in DP, memoization is nothing that there you are utilizing the concept of recursion only, but there you are storing the results of that particular recursive solution that you have. That's the only difference. So when you solve any problem using recursion via memoization approach, again, you are just revising the concepts of recursion only. So that's where again, the, you know, importance of recursion came into picture. So if you will be able to solve the problems of divide and conquer algorithm, or the problems with respect to DP, I am pretty sure that you will be able to get a very good command over recursive problems. But as a starting point, I would say start from a beginner level problem where maybe you will be solving a Fibonacci series just like the example which I gave you or maybe the problem of factorial, right? Or maybe the problem of count of stairs and so on. So there are so many beginner level problems which you can, which, which, which can be, you know, very frequently asked in an interviews as well. So try to start with that particular point. After that, go with the stage. So this is the, this is the, you know, first phase, I would say this is the first phase one, where you are solving a beginner level problem. After that, this is the phase number two, where you are solving an applications of divide and conquer. So here you basically know that how and what is the approach behind divide and conquer and then go while uh, via solving that using a recursion and after that this is the phase three where you will try to solve using a dynamic programming but again in every particular phase you will see that recursion plays a very important role you will see that uh, you know very easily you will be able to get the result via a recursive approach so in data structure algorithms whenever you are solving any of the problem 
algorithmically try to you try to see that whether you can utilize the property of recursion there or not so according to me this is the complete road map of getting a very good command over recursion and if you have any sort of doubt in this particular road map please do let me know i will for sure try to resolve it as soon as possible and uh, if you if you think that there are few problems where you are you are you know struggling a lot which are solvable using recursion do let me know in the comment section i will for sure read all your comments and we'll try to create a separate video for that that's uh, might be helpful for you all and with this let's end this video happy learning to all bye bye everyone if you like this video if you find this video very insightful do share it with everyone with all your friends who are facing trouble in understanding the concepts of dsa and please do hit like button subscribe to my channel it will really mean the world to me and with this bye bye everyone and i'll see you all in my next upcoming video